And we thank God this morning for waking us up, yes. clothing our right mind, blood running warm in our veins. We thank God for, for good health. We thank God when our health is not where we'd like for it to be, that he's there for us. And with our faith in him, we know that whatever is God's will, that's what it's going to be. So we always look to God for encouragement, for strength, for resilience. God is our all in all. So we are standing on holy ground. Yes, yes. So we're going to start with our call to worship. Give thanks and praise the Lord. God has dealt mercifully with us. Rejoice in God's abundant love. Lord, be with us. Help us to be ready to hear and respond to your word. Amen. And if you're able, please stand for him of praise on page 238. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, followed by our opening prayer by our pastor. Don't sit down yet, choir, because I'm going to ask Miss Trudell if we can sing just a chorus, because we're going to sing it like we so glad Jesus lifted us. Come on, congregation. We glad this morning.
Come on and give him glory. Uh. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Sometimes we take it for granted, church. But the air that we breathe does not even belong to us. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that he looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. Because if he treated us sometimes like we treat him, awful will be our condition. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before you this morning, God, with a humble heart, God. I come before you this morning, God, just to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace, God, that you give us what we do not deserve, God. Thank you for your mercy, God, that you don't give us what we do deserve, God. Lord, we thank you, God. For allowing us to come into your presence once again, God. To come to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise, God. Lord, I'm asking you, God, to do a heart circumcision, God. Regulate our minds this morning, God. Open deaf ears, God. Remove scales from eyes, God. Don't let us leave this sanctuary. Don't let us leave WebEx the way that we came on, God. Lord, we're asking you, to God, to create in us a clean heart, God, and renew in us the right spirit, God. Stir up, God, our gifts on the inside in the name of Jesus. Because the water has been troubled. All we got to do is step in, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that we can look to the hills from which cometh our help, God. Because all our help comes from you, Lord. Have your way, God, in these services this morning, God. We turn them over to you, God. Move us out of your way, God, so that your Holy Spirit can move. Lord, we thank you this morning, God. We honor you this morning you are so worthy to be praised and it's in Jesus precious mighty and holy name that we pray and we all say amen Amen. of faith which is on page 881 in your United Methodist hymnals the Apostles Creed the traditional version please stand page 881 in your United Methodist hymnals the Apostles Creed the traditional version I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
And that's where all of our strength comes from. We have to always remember to look to God. God is always there. Man will sometimes disappoint us. Sometimes not a, will not be available, but God is always there. Yes, he is. No matter uh, the, the time, the day, or the hour. So now if you're able to, please stand for our Psalter. It's on page 749 in your United Methodist hymnal, Psalm 17, page 749. come. Let your your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My My mouth does does not transgress. Concerning what others do, I have avoided the ways of the violent by following your word. My My steps have held fast to your paths. My My feet have not slipped. Show your steadfast love, O Savior, of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with beholding your presence. your bulletin, we will be reciting in unison our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the truth is our day and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. And this morning, our readings will be coming from Genesis and Matthew. So we're going to start with the Old Testament. Page 49, Genesis 32nd chapter, the 22nd through the 31st verses, page 49 in your Bible. 
the second chapter, the 22nd through the 31st verses. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford Jabba. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said to him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. He said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as the prince hast thou power with God and with man, and hath prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. If you're able to, please stand for our New Testament. It's on page 1,325 in your pew Bible. Matthew, 14th chapter, 13th through the 21st verse. One thousand three hundred and twenty five, fourteenth chapter, thirteenth through the twenty first verse. Fourteenth chapter, thirteenth through the twenty first verse. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. When the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. And may God have blessing to the readers, doers, and hearers of his word. Amen. 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 And if you're able to, please continue to stand for our hymn of preparation. It's on page 365 in your United Methodist hymnals. Grace greater than our sin. And after that, the next voice you will hear will be our pastor, Pastor Tracy Love.
grace, grace, God's grace, 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 greater than all of our sin. Lord, we come before you once again, God, just to say thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you've already prepared the soil of our hearts, God, that it will be good ground for the word to fall upon this morning, God. The word that will cut us, God, like a two-edged sword, God. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, I'm asking that you hide me behind your cross. Allow Tracy to decrease and your Holy Spirit to increase, God. Thank you for ears being open, God, and eyes that can see, Lord. We thank you, God. We love you and we adore you. And it's in Jesus' precious, mighty, and holy name that I pray. And we say amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to open your Bible with me to 1 Samuel. That can be found in your pew Bible on page 428. 1 Samuel chapter 11. Pew Bible, page 428. I'm going to ask you, those of you that's able... To please stand and give reverence to the reading of God's holy word. 1 Samuel chapter 11. And I'll be reading from my study Bible as I do when the Holy Spirit leads me to. I still hear pages and I want you to be able to follow along with the word. Amen. Amen. Nahash, the Ammonite, went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to him, make a treaty with us, and we will be subject to you. But Nahash, the Ammonite, replied, I will make a treaty with you only on the condition that I gorge out the right eye of every one of you. And so bring disgrace on all of Israel. Verse 3 says, the elders of Jabesh said to him, give us seven days so we can send messages throughout Israel. If no one comes to rescue us, we will surrender to you. Verse 4 says, when the messengers came to Gibeah of soil and reported these terms to the people, they all wept aloud. Just then Saul was returning from the fields behind his oxen, and he asked, what is wrong with everyone? Why are they weeping? Then they repeated to him what the men of Jabesh had said. Verse 6 says, when Saul heard their words, the Spirit of God came powerfully upon him, and he burned with anger. He took a pair of oxen, cut them into pieces, and sent the pieces by messenger throughout Israel, proclaiming, this is what will be done to the oxen of anyone who does not follow Saul and Samuel. Then the terror of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out together as one. Verse 8 says, when Saul mustered them up at Bezek, the men of Israel numbered 300,000 and those of Judah 30,000. They told the messengers who came, say to the men of Jabez Gilead, by the time the sun is hot tomorrow, you will be rescued. When the messengers went and reported this to the men of Jabez, they were elated. Verse 10 says, they said to the Ammonites, tomorrow we will surrender to you and you can do to us whatever you like. Verse 11 says, the next day Saul separated these men into three divisions. During the last watch of the night, they broke into the camp of the Amorites and slaughtered them until the heat of the day. Those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated and just for a little while, as long as the Holy Spirit says so. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to us from the sermon topic. Hold on. Your help is on the way. Hold on. 
your help is on the way. You see, as we gathered in the sanctuary today and we gathered on WebEx, we didn't come here by accident. We came looking for a word. We came with a sense of expectancy. We came expecting God to show up and show out. Because when we take a look around us and we see that our world is in chaos, things that should be happening is not happening. Things that should not be happening according to the word of God is happening all over this land. You see, and it's happening so much that it's at, happening at an alarming rate. What we see when we turn on the news could cause our eyes to think that we're losing. But I need to tell somebody this morning, we can't lose what Jesus already won. Jesus got the victory on Calvary and he defeated death. We can't lose what we've already won. Because of this chaos, sometimes we can't see our way clear. To someone this morning, it just seems like it's one thing after another. I can remember my parents saying, if it ain't one thing, it's something else. If I didn't just come out of storm, I'm getting ready to go in the storm or I'm in the middle of a storm now. It's sickness. You may not have the finance you need. The children may not be doing what they're supposed to be. Death is around us on every side. But I need to let somebody know that in the midst of God, God is still in control. See, the Holy Spirit has come and told us so many times, don't let your eyes fool you. Because Satan is a hallucinist. He makes you see things. He wants you to see things that's not really true. See, we know the truth. Too many times we want to stand on facts. But we got to learn to believe the truth. We got to learn to believe the promise. When we go in the grocery store, we know that food is high. But God said he's going to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Are you going to believe the facts, church, or are you going to believe the truth this morning? Amen, chandeliers. I don't know about you, but I'm standing on the truth this morning. You see, the Holy Spirit wanted me to tell somebody this morning, don't you dare give up. My granddaddy used to say, you can give out, but don't give up. You got to keep moving. He want me to remind somebody that he is still in control. The Holy Spirit came and asked us a couple of weeks ago, can you see what God sees for you? Can you see it this morning, church? Sometimes it's hard to see in the midnight, but the Bible tells me that weeping may endure for a night, but my God, joy is going to come in the morning. If I can just hold on in the midnight hour, if I can just fall down on my knees and say, Father, help me, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. Somebody is feeling hopeless this morning. Somebody is feeling like I want to throw in the towel this morning. Somebody is asking itself, then why, Pastor, what's the use? I've done everything I was supposed to do, and yet my world seems to be falling apart around me. I need to let you know, tell the truth, and shame the devil. That the devil sees the state we're in. But what he doesn't know is God has already gone before us. What he doesn't know is that we're not alone because he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. We might be in the valley, in the valley of a test. But my God, we're going to come out with a testimony. We're going to come out of the valley like a Goliath. The Holy Spirit reminded me that Psalms 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth and he says he will not let my foot slip. slip. It reminded me that he never slumbers and he never sleeps. He reminded me that he watches over us, church. He reminded me that he will keep us from all harm. He reminded us that we are kept by God this morning. 
He sent me to encourage somebody. Hold on. This is just a test building your testimony. Hold on. Your help is on the way. And what does it mean to hold on, church? Hold on means to grasp, carry, or support with one's hands or arms. And what is help? Help makes it easier for someone to do something. Somebody needs to know that Satan can't see what God has for you. Satan can't see God's plan for you. And as we look at this passage of scripture, we heard about Nahash, the Ammonite. And he was the king. And what he did was he went up to take Jabesh Gilead by surrounding them with armed forces. So he had them surrounded because what he was aiming to do was he was aiming to capture them. He didn't even want to fight. He was trying to avoid a battle, so he was trying to force them to surrender. And that name, Nahash, in my study means serpent. And when I read that his name meant serpent, it took me back to the serpent in the garden with Eve and just what the serpent did. You see, they wanted to make a treaty with him, but he was so focused on shaming them that he didn't even realize what he was getting himself into. Because they said, here am I, I want to make peace with you. But he says, the only way I'll do that is that if you let me go and drop the right eye of everybody. Because see, I'm not just going to make peace with you, I'm going to shame you. Because when you walk around and one of your eyes is missing, somebody is going to remember what I did to you. But they said, give us seven days. Seven days. And we know seven means complete. But see, they were about to mess up as well because when he said, okay, I'll give you seven days. I'm going to give you seven days. When they got that seven days, the men of Jabesh, they were trying to work it out on their own. Give us seven days to send out some messengers so we can try to find some help. Anybody did that? You're going through something and you're calling Sally and you're calling Sue and you're calling Henry. When God can work it out for you, the last person we call is God. But see what they said. Give us seven days. Let us send some men out and see can we find some help. But here comes Saul. Saul hadn't even gotten the message yet. Here comes Saul. And they're weeping aloud. They're crying. They're calling out. We don't know who they're calling out, but in my imagination, God hears this cry. Saul comes out. He said, well, what's wrong with the people? Because see, when you know the kind of God you serve, what's wrong with the people? Why are they crying like that? Why are they all upset? And the word of God tells us that the spirit of God fell upon him and he became angry. See, we can't just get angry. We got to let the spirit of God fall upon us. Because when the spirit of God fall upon us, it's going to cause us to do the right thing and to do something about it. Amen. And when the spirit of God fell out on Saul, them people still wouldn't do what they're supposed to do. They still wouldn't come. Here we are facing defeat. But you still don't want to do what you're supposed to do. Here we are facing dying out, but you still don't want to do what you're supposed to do. So the word tells us that Saul cut up some oxen and he sent it out. He sent the messages out again. Now they already got the first message and that didn't move them. So God had to allow something different. And when he sent it out, these cut up pieces of oxen, he said, this is, what gonna, this is what's going to happen to us. And guess what fell upon the people? The fear of the Lord. It didn't just say fear. It said the fear of the Lord fell upon them. So the spirit of the Lord fell on Saul. And the fear of the Lord fell on people. And look what happened. That caused them to come together. You don't hear me this morning. You don't hear God this morning. It's time for us, church, to come together. It's something about when we come together who is something about when we come together something happens when we can dwell in unity that's why david tells us in psalms 133 and 1 how good 
and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. But when all of this had happened, it tells us that when Saul mustered them up at Bezek, he had 300,000. And those of Judah, 30,000. God was putting some things together to deliver the Israelites out of their situation. Somebody need to know God putting some things in place to deliver you out of your situation this morning. Mm. Verse 9 says, And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall you say unto the men of Jabeskele, Tomorrow, hallelujah, somebody say tomorrow. Tomorrow, by that time, by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Ooh, look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, oh neighbor, your help is on the way. Ooh, Jesus, I felt that in my spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to know this morning that you're not alone. Somebody needs to know don't get in a hurry. You got to wait on God. Somebody got to know that he's already set something in place. Somebody got to know that you know that you know that you know that God has not left you. Ooh, glory to God. I feel it all in my spirit. Somebody got to know that you can't be afraid to ask for help. Somebody got to know that you can't be afraid to cry out. God hears your cry. Hold on. Your help is on the way. It don't matter what the doctor says. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God is a healer. See, church, and we can't get so disconnected. And I don't know who the Holy Spirit talking to. We can't get so busy and so disconnected that we refuse to help God send us. Amen, somebody. Let me say that again. You was expecting the help from that millionaire across the street. And he sent you the widow lady because the widow lady knew how to give everything she had. She could hear from God and do exactly what God has told us to do. Sometimes we get too caught up in our stuff and God can't use us. Mm. Don't get so holy out somebody that you won't seek help. Let me say that again. Don't get so holy that you won't seek help. And the Holy Spirit is almost through. But the Holy Spirit, and I shared this with you, Wesley, before. The Holy Spirit woke me up 4 o'clock one morning and said, hide yourself in my word. I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. <laughs> he said, hide yourself in my word because I'm going to protect you in my word. Hide yourself in my word so that you can speak it for me to watch over it. I heard the Holy Spirit say this morning, I told you to hide yourself in my word because the enemy is after your mind. But remember, I gave you a sound mind. There's nothing he can do with you. Amen. Amen. Hold on, somebody. Hold on. You at the edge of a breakthrough. Yes. Hold on, and if the enemy wasn't fighting you, then you ought to be worried. Mm. But if he's on your track, then you're doing something right. Mm. You're doing what God has called you to do. Somebody remember you on the edge of a breakthrough. And sometimes you just got to be obedient. See, we got in a position where we can hear from God. And now all we got to do is move. The door has already been open. Your help. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hold on. Your help is on the way. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you don't know, as a choir prepares to sing, 
If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, and I don't mean just heard about him, you've got to get connected to him, church. Some of us have been at the church all of our life, but we ain't in the church yet. So we have to get that personal connection. Because if we go outside and our cables are not hooked to our batteries in our car, they're not going to crank. We got to connect to the true vine. And that way he can change us from the inside out. Will there be one? The doors of Wesley is open. If God has sent you to this house to connect to this body, I'm going to ask you to remain at the altar after prayer. The altar is open for prayer as the choir sings. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you once again, God. Lord, we bow at your altar, God, with our head bowed in the lock of our shoulders, God. Some came for one thing, God, and some came for another, God, but you made us, God. You even know the strands of hair that we have on our head, God. I'm asking you, God, to receive every petition unto you in the name of Jesus. Lord, if it is your will, God, if we're praying out of your will, God, we're asking you allow the Holy Spirit to intercede, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for your healing power that has been dispatched this week in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for the angels you have encamped around the sick, God. Lord, we even have... Thank you for the angels that you have watching out for the lost in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for being our helper, God, that's going to send the help. Put the people in place, God, that need to be there, God. Remove those stumbling blocks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, that we're able to dwell in unity, Lord. We thank you, God, for an increase of our spiritual sight and our spiritual hearing, God. Search our hearts this morning, God. Do a circumcision, God. If you find anything that's not of you, God, we're asking you to cast it out. If you find hate, God, we're asking you to replace it with love in the name of Jesus. 
Help us to go out, God, and be the people that you have called us to be. Stir up the dormant gifts that you've placed on the inside of us, God. Help us to see who you have ordained us to be. And Lord, help us to walk in our purpose, on purpose, Lord. Oh God, we just thank you this morning. We give you all honor, power, and glory, and praise, Lord, because it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you as we prepare to feast at God's table. I'm going to ask you to turn to page 12 in your United Methodist hymnals. Page 12, a service of word and table. And if you did not get communion on the way in, let us should know and we'll make sure that you have. Praying our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves as our gifts to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the name. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give our humble confession. Once we've given our humble confession, we will, may pull back the liner that covers the bread that represents the broken body of Christ. You may partake. Pull back the side that has the juice that represents the blood of Christ shed on Calvary. The blood of Christ given for you, you may partake. Go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. For birthdays for the week of August 6th through the 12th, we have Freddie Lawton Jr. on the 6th, Mary Ann Chenault on the 8th, and Jermaine Bates on the 10th. We have no announcements for the weeks coming up, but looking ahead on Tuesday, August 10th at 7 p.m., Wesley will go to Cannon. Oh, Thursday, sorry. Thursday, August 10th at 7 p.m., Wesley will go to Canaan United Methodist Church. Saturday, August 26th, 9 a.m. through 2 p.m., Church administra Administration for Clergy, Laity, led by Reverend... Reverend Robert Cox at Grace United Methodist Church, Charleston, South Carolina. Please remember everyone on the prayer list and words to encourage evangelism. God can use any circumstance to teach me. The upper room. Hope you all have a blessed week. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Just a few announcements. Um, just a reminder for the nomination committee, we will meet Wednesday at 6 p.m. by your WebEx. Um, if you hold an office presently, and I have not contacted you about remaining in place, please see me after service. I just need a yes or a no, so when I meet with the committee, I'll know what positions we need to fill. If you do not presently hold an office, and God is, everybody has a gift, and the gifts are supposed to come together to edify the body of the church edify the body of God's church. We've got to start showing up for God like he show up for us every morning, early in the morning. Amen? Amen. And I'd like to see Miss Robinson for just a few minutes after service. Wesley, I love you. We will also bless the children third Sunday. We're going to anoint and bless the children as we send them back out to school. So, Invite children, make sure our youth are here. I did it that Sunday because I know that they will 
be here. Wesley, I love you with the love of God. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. And now we will stand for our closing hymn, page 593 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Here I am, Lord, followed by our benediction. Lord, we thank you for the word that went forth this morning, God. We thank you for the ministry of music this morning, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you've stirred up a boldness on the inside. That we can go out this week and tell somebody to hold on. Your help is on the way. We can go out this week and introduce somebody to Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God. Mm. Now may the love of God. 
the sweet, sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. We all sing together.